Okay, um, here's the video for the review on chapter 10. Um, okay, starting with question one. What is the sum of the series? Um, so, um, it's likely that if it's asking for the sum of a given series, um, I'm going to say there's a really good chance that the series is probably geometric because it's really easy to find the sum of a geometric series. Um, yeah. So, with that being said, this is a geometric series. There are a couple ways you can tell. One way you can tell that this is geometric is by building out the series itself. So, for example, if I plug in starting with n equals 1, I plug in 1, I get negative 2 to the first over e squared. That's the first term. I plug in n equals 2, I get negative 2 squared, which will be positive 4, um, and then e to the uh, third. If I plug in 2, I'll get minus 8 over e to the fourth. So you can see that there's a pattern where that's being multiplied by negative 2. This is being multiplied by e. So if I were to take this term, divide it by this term, or take this term, divide it by this term, or take any two consecutive terms, divide it by its previous term, then you're going to um, get the common ratio. But again, the, the common ratio is pretty evident. You multiply by negative 2, you multiply by e. So the common ratio is equal to negative 2 over e. Um, another way that you could tell um, if it's geometric, you might see geometrics, geometrics uh, series in the form of a sub 1 times by r to the uh, n or sometimes n minus 1. Um, it might be n, it might be n minus 1, kind of depends on where it's starting. But um, So this starts at n equals 1, so I would say that we'd want this to just be to uh, r to the n. Well, um, that would be nice, but this right here is not to the nth power, it's to the nth plus 1. But I can make this to the nth power if I factor out an e from this denominator. So, get the series, n equals 1. I'm going to put 1 over e on the outside, times by, we have negative 2 to the nth over e to the nth. So, factoring out this e right here, I took one away from this factor, which is why it's no longer plus one. I took one out of it. If I were to take another e out of this factor, then this would become n minus one. If I were to take another one, it'd be n minus two. Um, so on and so forth. So, with that being said, this right here kind of looks like this part right here. This would be the same thing uh, with the series one over e, and then you'd have negative 2 over e to the nth power and thus my ratio is equal to negative 2 over e which is less than 1 and if a, if your ratio is less than 1 in a geometric series the series converges you can find its sum okay so those are just two ways that you can find the common ratio um, now as for what is the sum of a geometric series so the sum is equal to a sub 1 over 1 minus r. That would be equal to, so a sub 1, well, here's the thing. We already plugged in some values, and we, we have our first term over here. So it's going to be negative 2 over e squared divided by 1 uh, plus 2 over e. Just do some simplifying. So negative 2 over e squared divided by um, 1 is the same thing as e over e, so I can add these right here if I have a common denominator. So I'll get e plus 2 divided by e. Do a keep change flip or a copy dot flop, depending on how you like it. e over e plus 2. And then this will simplify because th those factors can cancel. 1 will be left over, so I can distribute that to those two terms. Uh, I get negative 2 over e squared plus 2e as the sum of this series right there. Okay. Um, 
Number two is not very different. So in the McLaren series uh, for the function f is given by uh, this um, power series, which is also geometric. You can kind of see, again, it's taking on the form that we have over here. Okay, what is the value of f of 3? It's really not that bad. Just don't really think about it too much. You guys know what to do with f of 3. You guys see something like this, and your algebra instincts tell you to plug in 3. Well, that's exactly what you're supposed to do. I'm going to plug in 3 for x right there. So f of 3 would be equal to negative 3 over 4 to the n. Okay, well, if this is what f of 3 equals to, f of 3 is equal to a geometric series where the absolute value of my radius is less than 1. Okay, well, then this right here has to be equal to the sum of a geometric series. And with n equals 0 here, that means my first term is going to be 1 over 1 plus my common ratio, or 1 minus my common ratio, so that would be 1 plus 3 fourths. Do some algebra like you just did up in the problem above, that's going to be 7 over 4, which will be equal to 4 sevenths. So hence f of 3 is equal to 4 sevenths. Okay, um, for the next part, what values of p will both, uh, for, uh, will both of these series um, converge? Well, okay, so note here, um, this series right here is a p series. This series right here is a geometric series. Um, a p series will converge. So again, let's also acknowledge the the difference between a p series and a geometric series. If you you were to relate these these series to um, to their functions, p series are relatable to um, rational functions like one over x or one over x squared or one over x to the, we'll say, n power. These are p-series. And we've proved all these type of series, all p-series, we've proved um, when they will and will not converge. 1 over x diverges. 1 over x squared converges. Anytime the value of n is greater than 1, the p-series, the given p-series, will converge. Anytime it's equal to or less than 1, it will diverge. Okay? And we've already talked about a geometric series. A geometric series will, if you were to compare to a function, would look more like a, um, an exponential function, like 2 to the x, like 3 to the x, like 1 half to the x power. Of course, whenever the ratio is less than 1, whenever the ratio is less than 1, this series will converge. So that's the difference between the p-series and a geometric series. It's important that you know when these type of series converge, especially for a problem like this right here. So this is a p-series. because So uh, um, n is the base um, right here, p is, uh, and then p is in the exponent right here. n is the exponent here, p is in the base. But in any case, n is where the exponent, uh, n right here is the exponent, so geometric n is the base here this right here is the exponent p series so this p series will converge whenever 2p has to be less than 1 again the exponent here has to be less than 1 this has to be less than 1 for this given p series to um, sorry has to be greater than 1 has to be greater than 1 for it to converge this series right here, this geometric series, the base, the ratio, has to be um, less than 1. So for this one, we would say that the base, which is p over 2, has to be less than 1 to converge. So we know 2p has to be greater than 1 to converge. We also know that p over 2 has to be less than 1. Solve this for p, because it's asking for what values of p. Divide by 2. So p has to be greater than 1 half. Multiply by 2 over here p has to be less than 2. Therefore, what values of p will make both of these series converge? 
when p is between 1 half and 2. Okay. All right. Um, questions 4 through 6. So that's going to be the next three questions here. We're going to. Um, the function g has derivatives of all orders, and the Maclaurin series for g is this one right here. So we're basically just saying g of x is equivalent to this Maclaurin series right here. Here's the series. This is it. Um, this is the series built out as a polynomial. So use the ratio test to determine the interval of convergence for the Maclaurin series. So I'm only going to use the series part for the ratio test. I'm not going to be using the polynomial. Um, of course, the, the ratio test is the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth plus 1 term divided by the nth term. Since we're also going to be using absolute value, I'm not going to worry about including this part right here because that's just the uh, alternating part. But x raised to the, if I plug in n plus 1 right there, that's going to become um, 2n plus 2. I'm going to add 1 again, so that's going to be 2n plus 3. So x to the 2n plus 3 divided by, um, as I plug in n plus 1 here, that's going to be 2n plus 2 plus 3, so that's going to be 2n plus 5. So 2n plus 5 times by, now I'm dividing, so I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal <coughs> of the nth term. That's going to be uh, 2n plus 3 on top, x to the 2n plus 1 on the bottom. Okay. Um, Okay, so now let's just do some simplifying. I'm going to focus on these two parts right here. Um, so as I simplify these parts right here, I'm going to subtract their coefficients. So 2n minus 2n, those are going to cancel. 3 minus 1 is going to become 2, so I'll have x squared. I'm going to put that outside. So absolute value x squared times by limit as n approaches infinity what's left over 2n plus 3 divided by 2n plus 5 okay um, so with this being said right here um, hmm. uh, well you evaluate this limit honestly this can be done visually this right here is just going to be equal to 1 um, if you follow L'Hopital's rule if you evaluate the limit of infinity, you get infinity over infinity, which if, which is of course not one, right? <laughs> it's indeterminate. So I use L'Hopital's rule. I get the limit as n approaches infinity of two over two, which is one. Therefore, all of this is going to be equal to one. Uh, this part will be equal to one, but you still have this part right here. So in any case, it's uh, absolute value of x squared. And then when this is less than one that's when this uh, series will converge. So we've evaluated the limit. We have the radius of convergence. Um, in any case, if you simplify it, take the square root, that's going to be between negative 1 and 1. So x will be less than 1, greater than negative 1. So this is the start, but we can't forget that we have to actually plug these values in for x. I'm going to plug it into this part right here. I'm still not really using this part right here for number 4 anyways. I'm going to plug in 1 and negative 1 in for x and evaluate and see if this, the, the resulting series will converge or diverge. So let's see here. So for let's say g of negative 1, that will be equal to series and equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n and then negative 1 to the 2n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 3. If I clean it up just a little bit, um, these have the same base, right? So I can add their exponents, negative 1 to the 3n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 3. Um, we have an alternating series. The, this will alternate between positive and negative 1. Um, and then down here we have 2n plus 3, so an alternating series. So let's use the alternating series test. And the alternating series test says that um, the terms need to decrease in absolute value, which they they do. So if you think about the absolute value of this right here, um, 1 over 2n plus 3, 
every uh, that's always going to decrease because as uh, n gets larger, the ratio gets smaller. So terms decrease in absolute value. Decrease in absolute value. And we also need to state the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over 2n plus 3 has to be equal to 0, which in this case it definitely does. Therefore, the series converges. Uh, by the abs, uh, by the alternating series test. So, I'm going to include that in my interval. Now let's check one. So, g of one, that's going to be equal to. Um, so if I do plug in one, right here, one to any power is just going to be one. So then I'm just going to be left with this divided by that. So negative 1 to the n divided by 2n plus 3. Well, look, it's alternating again. And it's going to follow the same, by following the same alternating series test, it's going to converge. So uh, converges by alternating series test. And we're going to include it here. Um, to be honest, on the actual test, um, I'm just going to say that just w once you get to the part where you're testing endpoints, it's very common for the series to end up being an alternating series or it could be a geometric series or it could be a P series um, and so those are the, the three very common type of series that results in plugging in your endpoints and the thing is we all know when those are going to converge or diverge so if you have a result of like 1 over n or 1 over 2n minus 3 or something like this right here if it's a p series where p is 1 or uh, is less than or equal to 1 just state that it diverges because by by p series or if it's if you get like 1 over n squared this is a p series where p is greater than 1 so it has to converge just state that it will converge by a p series and include it here so I wouldn't make too much of a fuss about testing these endpoints when you're on working on my test. Just for the sake of time, just state that you know that it converges or di diverges by which test, if that makes sense. Okay, um, I'm going to probably break this video, these videos up into pages. That way, you guys uh, can more easily find a problem if you're looking for a problem. So I'm going to stop the video and um, uh, continue this in, a, in another video.